concussion is a type of head injury. Um, the difference being that, for example, you know, you get into a car accident and you go flying through the window, you may have skull fractures, you're going to have edema in the brain, bleeding in the brain, um, you may have swelling. A lot of times you won't see that, or most of the time you won't really see structural damage in a concussion. What does happen is you get this Initially, the brain gets jolted inside, sort of like the egg yolk in an eggshell. It gets jolted, but with no visible damage. And that's at times what causes, you know, for some people, the loss of consciousness, the post-traumatic amnesia, where you can't really remember. You know, I ask you where you are now, you may be a little confused, dazed, and so you won't be able to answer such questions. Now, with most head injuries, for example, car crashes, concussions, it's the whole brain that's being shaken. And, you know, there's the direct forces. So, for example, if you hit the windshield, you're going forward and then back. So you get the direct force here initially and then back here. You know, the way Johnny Damon got hit, he had what's called a rotational force where you're hit this way, so your head brain turns. And it gets turned this way, as not just this way. And so it's not necessarily a specific area, but the whole equilibrium of the brain is fouled up. Neurotoxic cascade means that there are certain chemicals in the brain that regulate, you know, how the brain obtains its energy, how it makes use of it, and these chemicals get messed up, in layman's terms, I guess. And, you know, so you get things that, the after a concussion, the amount of blood that gets to the brain often is lessened because of something called vasoconstriction. The veins, the arteries just constrict a bit. And so when you get injured, the brain actually needs more energy. It's, in a sense, more active than is good for it. Because it cannot get that energy, that's when you start experiencing the, a lot of the cognitive components that are associated. People have headaches, dizziness, nausea, um, you know, balance problems, which are a big thing with the concussion assessment. And um, as far as the cognitive stuff, what you often see, attention. I mean, you know, whenever you ding your head, whether it's a serious ding or a slight ding, attention is one of the more sensitive components of brain functioning, just because it relies on so many things to work properly. Um, you get short-term memory problems. Um, again, attention concentration is a big one. Motor speed is a big issue, you know, reaction time. Um, you know, a lot of times you see changes in personality. So a person may suddenly appear depressed, angry, irritable, you become lethargic. And so those are some of the typical things that you see during a concussion. Okay. Well, I think part of the reason when, for example, I recently evaluated a military person um, and he suffered multiple concussions. I mean, some of them were probably more than just concussions, but the way he said it, you know, you tell someone that you've got this ding, they're going to take you off the field. And, you know, for him, he's a military guy. It means that he's not going to be doing his job there, and that's what he's, you know, was sent for. For an athlete, you know, whether it's a cheerleader or a football player, their job is to do, you know, you'd say, I've got a concussion, or I don't feel so well, they're going to take you out and replace you. And so there's partly that desire to keep playing, which, you know, we all want to do, and so you downplay your symptoms. Uh, with a concussion, you don't want to play through that because it's just going to make the healing process take a lot longer. The younger the player, the more susceptible they are and the high school players, for example, tend to heal at a slower rate than college athletes. And college athletes tend to heal slower than the older athletes. So as you get older and your development comes to an end, I mean, I don't know if we ever stop developing. Some of us have devolved too. Um, you're more susceptible when you're younger. I mean, wait to get your concussions. Once you've got an injury to a part of the body, it's easier to re-injure that part. You know, you break a leg, it's easier to break your leg a second time. 
the first concussion makes you more susceptible to future concussions. And so future concussions will take less force to come about. So if the first one took you 90 G, the next one may take you fewer G than that. Also, there may be a genetic component that some people are just constitutionally more susceptible to having them. You know, you hear of people having 13 concussions. I mean, I don't know how you can survive 13 of those. But, you know, some people just are more susceptible. I stick. Football, you're not allowed to do helmet to helmet. In those times, um, you find that a lot of people who have symptoms, you know, going well beyond the few weeks that the typical person needs to heal, these people also tend to deal with a lot of mental health issues, depression, anxiety, other things that may be compounding what they're going through and that perpetuates the symptoms. So, you know, you're not going to walk on a broken leg or run on a broken leg, I should say. So you're not going to start using your head as much after the concussion. It needs time to heal. And usually it takes about a week or so. By two weeks, nearly all players are done. Three weeks, you would, I think it's about 90% of players show no symptoms whatsoever. And so time is really the healing process. And then it's a gradual return to school, to the game, 